Hey guys, let's go ahead and get started on lesson one. This is the first language lesson. When we do language lessons, you're going to talk. You're going to name things and learn about things like opposites and rules. You'll learn facts about places and things and funny story characters. You'll learn about the calendar, difficult words, and a lot of other things. Remember to follow my directions and work hard. Now let's start with the rule for containers. Listen, if it's made to hold things, it's a container. Say the rule. Get ready. If it's made to hold things, it's a container. Again, say the rule. Get ready. If it's made to hold things, it's a container. Excellent. Good. Now, if something is made to hold things, it's a container. So, a box. A box is made to hold things. So, what do you know about a box? Get ready. It's a container. A cup is made to hold things. So what do you know about a cup? Get ready. It's a container. A basket is made to hold things. So what do you know about a basket? Get ready. It's a container. Um, a suitcase is made to hold things. So what do you know about a suitcase? Get ready. It's a container. Excellent. Now, is a knife made to hold things? Get ready. No. So what do you know about a knife? Get ready. It's not a container. Great job. Now, I'm going to name some things. You'll tell me if they are containers. Listen, a log. Tell me, container or not container? Get ready. Not container. Excellent. A bike. Get ready. Not container. Good. A cabinet. Get ready. Container. Excellent. A jar. Get ready. Container. Excellent. What about a pencil? Get ready. Not a container. Good. Now, you can say a house, a car, or a plane are containers because they do hold things. Those are things that we don't usually call containers. We call them a building or a car and a plane are vehicles. Remember, if something is made to hold things, it's a container. If something is not made to hold things, it's not a container. Great job. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to opposites. Some words let you figure out things. Those words like dry, skinny, fool, young, and long. Good. If something is dry, it's not wet. If something is fat, it's not skinny. If something is small, it's not big. If something is young, it's not old. If something is full, it's not empty. If something is long, it's not short. Now, your turn. If something is dry, if something is dry, what else do you know about it? Get ready. It's not wet. If something is fat, what else do you know about it? Get ready. It's not skinny. If something is small, what else do you know about it? Get ready. It's not big. If something is young, what else do you know about it? Get ready. It's not old. If something is full, what else do you know about it? Get ready. It's not empty. If something is long, what else do you know about it? Get ready. 
It's not short. Excellent. Now, let's try a couple of those sentences. I'm thinking of a chicken that is skinny. I'm thinking of a chicken that is skinny. What else do you know about it? Get ready. It's not fat. Good. Now, I'm thinking of a leaf that is wet. I'm thinking of a leaf that is wet. What else do you know about it? Get ready. It's not dry. Excellent. Let's use our brains for this one. I'm thinking of a rope that is long. I'm thinking of a rope that is long. What else do you know about it? Get ready. It's not short. Good. See the whole thing about the rope? Get ready. The rope is not short. Excellent. Good. Now, I'm thinking of a jug that is empty. I'm thinking of a jug that is empty. What else do you know about it? Get ready. It's not full. Say the whole thing about the jug. Get ready. The jug is not full. Excellent. Last one. I'm thinking of a duck that is young. I'm thinking of a duck that is young. What else do you know about it? Get ready. It's not old. Say the whole thing about the duck. Get ready. The duck is not old. Great job with all those opposites. We did so well on those exercises. Let's do a little cheer. Let's go ahead and do kiss your brains. Let's kiss our brains, ready? Thank you. Let's continue. Now we're gonna talk about plants and animals. Listen, fruits and vegetables and trees and grass are all in the class of plants. Listen again. Fruits and vegetables and trees and grass are all in the class of plants. What's the big class name for fruits and vegetables, trees and grass? Get ready. Yes, plants. Another large class has cows and bugs and other living things that move. That's the class of animals. I'll name some things that are either plants or animals. You tell me the class they're in. Got it? Awesome. First one, dogs. What class? Get ready. Animals. Carrots. What class? Get ready. Plants. Good. Let's continue. Grass. What class? Get ready. Plants. Rabbits. What class? Get ready. Animals. Butterflies. What class? Get ready. Animals. Trees. What class? Get ready. Plants. Turkeys. What class? Get ready. Yes, animals. Now, let's think about some more animals that we haven't named. I'm thinking of a cat or a monkey. What about a bird? Those are all animals that we haven't named. Let's go ahead and move on. So I'll tell you the rule for vehicles. If it's made to take you places, it's a vehicle. If it's made to take you places, it's a vehicle. Say the rule with me. Get ready. If it's made to take you places, it's a vehicle. All by ourselves, say the rule. Get ready. If it's made to take you places, it's a vehicle. Now listen, if something is made to take you places, it's a vehicle. 
If something is not made to take you places, it's not a vehicle. A car is made to take you places. So what do you know about a car? Get ready. It's a vehicle. A boat is made to take you places. So what do you know about a boat? Get ready. It's a vehicle. A knife is not made to take you places. So what do you know about a knife? Get ready. It's not a vehicle. Now I'm gonna name some things. You tell me if they are vehicles. Ready? A train, vehicle or not vehicle. Get ready. Vehicle. Bike. Get ready. Vehicle. A cabinet. Get ready. Vehicle. <gasps> not vehicle. Great job. Way to catch that. What about a bus? Get ready. Vehicle. A house. Get ready. Not vehicle. A plane. Get ready. Vehicle. Great job with all those and catching me in my mistake. Remember, if something is made to take you places, it's a vehicle. If something is not made to take you places, it's not a vehicle. Excellent job, guys. We did really, really good on those exercises, those final two. I want to do another tier. Let's go ahead and do Oreos. Let's get our Oreos. We're going to lick this side, lick the other side, put it back together, take a big old bite, and we go, mm, 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 delicioso. Great job. Let's move on. Now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to read you a story. Listen to the things that happen in the story because you're going to have to fix up a picture that shows part of the story. This is a story about Paul. Everybody has favorite colors. Some people love red. Other people love yellow. Others love blue or green. Some like brown or black. Well, Paul had his favorite colors too, but his favorite colors were not red or blue or brown or black, not even white or yellow. His two favorite colors were pink and purple. It's hard to say which color Paul liked the most. Sometimes he would prefer pink. At other times, he would prefer purple. Well, Paul also loved to paint. And whenever he painted, he used one of his favorite colors. One day, he was on his porch painting a picture of purple plums. Everybody, what was Paul's favorite color on that day? Get ready. Yes, purple. Paul said to himself, painting pictures of purple plums on the porch is perfect. That's hard to say. Listen again. Painting pictures of purple plums on the porch is perfect. Who thinks they can say that? Try it. Painting pictures of purple plums on the porch is perfect. Great job. But as he was painting, he dripped some purple paint on the floor. Oh, poo, he said. Puddles of purple paint on the porch. But I can fix it. So he got a great big brush and started to paint the whole floor of the porch purple. Listen. What did Paul start to do to fix up the puddles of the purple paint? Get ready. Paint the whole floor purple. Is that the way you would fix it up? Maybe not. I would probably maybe try to pick it up with a napkin or a rag and clean it. Good. Let's go on. But here's what Paul did. He got a great big brush and started to paint the whole porch purple. But just as he was almost finished, he backed into his painting and the painting fell against the window. It didn't break the window, but it got purple paint on the window pane. See if you can get a picture of that in your mind. 
Paul backed into the painting. His painting fell against the window and the window had a big smear of purple paint. Why did the purple paint get on the window pane? Get ready. Because the painting fell against the window. Good. So now the floor of the porch is purple and there's purple paint on the window pane. Whoa, Paul said. Now there are patches of purple paint on the pane, but I can fix it. He tried wiping the purple paint from the pane, but that didn't work. At last, Paul said, I fixed the floor of the porch. I bet I can fix the pane the same way. I bet I know how Paul's going to fix up the window. What do you think he's going to do? Maybe he's going to paint the whole window purple. It didn't work when Paul tried wiping the purple paint from the pane. So he said, hmm, a purple pane may look perfectly pleasing. And he painted the whole window pane purple. But just as he was painting the last corner of the window pane, some paint dripped on the wall. Uh-oh, I bet I know what Paul will do now. What do you think he's going to do? Maybe he's going to paint the whole wall purple now. The purple paint dripped on the wall. Wow, Paul said. Perhaps purple paint would look perfect on the wall. So you know what he did next? He painted the whole wall purple. And just as he was finishing up the last corner of the wall, his brother came out to the house. His brother walked on the porch and rubbed against the wall and got a great big smear of purple paint on his pants. Paul's brother tried to wipe the purple paint from his pants, but he just got the paint all over. I'm a mess, Paul's brother said. So you are, Paul agreed. Then Paul smiled at his brother and said, but don't worry, brother, I can fix it. And he did just that. What do you think Paul did to fix his brother's pants? Maybe he painted them. Maybe he put them in the washer. I don't know. Great job with that story. Now let's go ahead and get ready for another cheer. This cheer, we're going to do firecrackers. So we start down here. We go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, blaster. We clap and we snap our fingers down. Ready? That's how we do it. So we start again. Ready? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, blaster. And come snap down.